last 19 years, polling fans have been coming to Tomo, Wisconsin to see the best of the best. And this year, a brand new division comes to this incredible Super National Poll. The 19th annual Budweiser Super Nationals will feature for the first time in history the Big Rig Series, modified over-the-road semis competing for top dollar here at Toma. Now, in the past, they've been used as exhibition vehicles, but tonight, the first time in Toma, Wisconsin, they'll be going after an $87,000 purse. We will see what happens here. The Big Rigs are at Toma for the first time in the storied 19-year history. Coming up, the Big Rigs and our first puller, Norm Larson, the current points leader in the Ground Wolf. He's the number one puller in the Big Rig Series. Norm Larson first went up the Ground Wolf. It's a 1992 International, 736 cubic inches of Detroit diesel for an engine. Now these uh, trucks right here can run turbochargers. Norm is running four turbos. 18 years in pulling, has run a number of exhibitions in the past. He's involved in farming and the trucking business out of Alden, Minnesota. Our number one test puller, Norm Larson. This guy knows how to win. Let's see if he can put the right equation down in the first ever Big Rig Series clash here at Toma. Norm Larson, the ground wolf, first one out and real close to 300 feet. Liberty Bell up next, Mike Mexker out of Silver Lake, Indiana. It's a 1976 Kenworth, 1150 cubic inches, two turbos. Now, he's been involved in uh, pulling for 14 years. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the show, the fact that this has become, for the first time, a real class. Now, they've had some exhibition runs where they've actually gone out and had some competition, but it's the first time it's been a series, and it's the first time it's been at Toma. Mike Mexker's won some point championships. He owns Mexker Trucking Company, and he is one tough competitor. The Liberty Bell out of Indiana. a guy that's got a real advantage here at Toma. He's got not one, but two big rigs, the Bull and the Longhorn. Calls his operation the stagecoach pulling team. Out of Hastings, Minnesota, it's Gary Tiger Rios. They're both equipped with V12 Detroit diesels. Now, the Bull is what we'll see right here. The Bull has been one of those trucks which has been involved in exhibitions and uh, car and truck shows for the past number of years, and Tiger says that he's got the opportunity, really, to use this as an experimental vehicle for the Longhorn. We'll see what happens right here. Leading the class right now, Mike Metzger at 287 and 9. That could change. We'll see what the man from Hastings, Minnesota can do here, Gary Reese. Feet the first full pull of the Big Rig Series. Gary Reese will come back with the Longhorn. That in a couple of minutes. One out the gate. Let's see what the next competitor can do. Out of East Canton, Ohio, aboard Lady Butterfly, a 1974 Kenworth. It's John Mann. Now, this gives up a couple of cubic inches in a Detroit diesel, 852 cubic inches, running two turbochargers. Been involved in pulling for about 10 years. Has run kind of inconsistent the past couple of weeks on the tour, but has been able to come into Toma and with a, a little bit of technical know-how, been able to put some feet behind the rest of the people in his particular class. Let's see what Johnny Mann can do here, the Lady Butterfly, as he gets set to chase 300 feet, a full pull here at Toma. Johnny Mann gonna be 
very, very close to that magical 300-foot distance. We'll see what happens here. Looks as evidently they've scored a 300-foot full pull. That's got to make you feel pretty good. Oh, man, yay! I didn't think I did it. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely, John Mann right now takes the Lady Butterfly and puts it into the pull-off. Next up, this is a really nice show quality vehicle, and besides that, it's very, very competitive. This belongs to a guy by the name of Larry Carey out of Morley, Michigan. He calls it Dodge Fever. Now, Dodge does not make an over-the-road holler anymore. The last year they made it was 1972. This has got a Cummings engine in it, two turbos, and uh, Larry Carey very, very happy with it. When Larry comes to an event, he brings a whole bunch of people with him, the grandkids, lots and lots of relatives, and he honestly has a great time doing what he's doing. Been involved in the business for about 12 years and is involved in sand and gravel trucking back in Morley, Michigan. He's very proud of Dodge Fever and with good reason to be. It is considered among big rig truckers as an antique piece. going to fall just a little bit short there at 300 feet. But what a marvelous effort. What a good-looking rig it is for Larry Carey. Out of Painesville, Ohio, probably one of the biggest and best known of the truck lines, of course, is the Mack. And out of Painesville is J.R. Collins. J.R. Collins has been involved in pulling for a whole lot of years. Back in 1992, he won the Indy Super Bowl exhibition. The Mack engine behind uh, that Mack Bulldog out front producing 998 cubic inches, 1,800 horsepower. He has had five-time national championship in truck pulling, and he is just in love with this big, beautiful Mac. He's going to put on a fire show, a light show, and everything else. It's all smoke and mirrors, but one thing is for sure, this Mac can run down this track. Oh, takes it all the way, J.R. Collins, 300 feet in a full pole. The tornado striking fear in the hearts of all big rig pullers. Galen Hoover out of Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. He and J.R. Collins have been battling back and forth at events for years. And I'm going to tell you one thing. We've got a pull-off right now with a couple. Galen Hoover definitely has got the uh, right stuff to get into a pull-off here with the tornado. It's a 1979 Kenworth, and it has got all kinds of power. Supplied by Detroit Diesel V12. Two turbos kicking out 850 five cubic inches. Galen Hoover should be able to work on this particular vehicle. He's a mechanic by trade. Let's see if he can put the tornado into the pull-off to join the rest of the big rigs. Tiger Reese, John Mann, and J.R. Collins all have yet to finish tonight. They're all going to go back to the starting line for their chance to pull it off. Detroit Diesel, the Tornado Galen Hoover, big time! Gary Reese, another opportunity. Now, you remember, he was the first one to take it out the end in the bull. This is the Longhorn, and he hopes to be able to duplicate that effort here with a great pass at this 300-foot Toma track. Peterbilt's are uh, both what both of his trucks are, and he's got V12 Detroit diesel engines inside. Tiger Reese was able to take one past 300 feet. Let's see if he can make it a double and increase our pull-off by another competitor. Last competitor four out the gate. Tiger Reese is going to try to make it five. If he can, he's got one out. Here comes the long one. It's going to be real, real, real close to that 300-foot mark. Yes, you do. Well, here it comes, Gary Reese. Kind of surprised because he's not been running real well as of late. But he comes up and puts both of his rides into the pull-off. starts to build the boost and as he comes off the line he's got full rpm shifting through all the gears let's see if he can make it happen here the stagecoach pulling team in the pole angling for the corner angling for the corner and real 
real nice move near 300 feet. John Mann has got to be excited about this. He's in a pull-off. He's running with all of the top guns of the Big Rig Series, and he's got an opportunity to make it happen. Now, he's given up a little bit in the horsepower department to the J.R. Collins and the Galen Hoovers and maybe even to the to the uh, Gary Reese. We'll see what happens here. At this particular track, anything can happen, and a lot of times it does. In 19 years of pulling here at Toma, all kinds of great things have happened, and sometimes the underdog even comes up the winner. Johnny Mann, Lady Butterfly of East Canton, Ohio, could put his name in the big record book, winning the first big rig clash here at Toma. Green flag is out, and he starts to build the boost, coming straight down the middle of the track. If he can hold a good line, he will have a good opportunity to win the class. He's got to get by 296 and 5. He's got to get by 296 and 5. It's going to be real, real close. 292 and 7, he comes up a little bit short, but he's got to feel good about that as he has put himself into the record book, at least getting into the pull-off. J.R. Collins, a man that has won lots of titles, a man that has won quite a bit in the exhibitions, a man that has claimed some world titles when there's just a handful of semis. He's been around for a long, long time. J.R. Collins, the Buckeye Bulldog, could take home the victory. But there's a couple of other people that would like to say, no, J.R., not this time around. Galen Hoover, one of them, Gary Reese, the other one, and John Mann right now says, boy, if I could beat J.R., I'd be in good, good shape. J.R. Collins out of Painesville, Ohio. J.R. Collins starts to fill the boost and all kinds of Mac horsepower coming down the track. Lifts the front end. Lots of torque coming up. He's got to get by 296 and 5. The Bulldog is going to do it. J.R. Collins. <laughs> comes the one-two punch. The tornado against the Bulldog. 302 and five is where the Kendall leading distance marker sits right now. That's where JR parked it in his big Mac. And we will see now if Galen Hoover in the tornado can tweak the Detroit diesels, pull out some horsepower, and take the victory away from the dog. Galen Hoover's got a shot at it. Gary Reese also has a shot at it too. We can't count him out. He's the last puller in the class. There's two left. For Galen Hoover, he comes a little bit short, 300 feet and 8 inches. J.R. Collins dodges the tornado. Out of Hastings, Minnesota, Gary Reese with the second of his two vehicles. He's got a real good shot at unseating J.R. Collins, who right now holds the distance of 302 and 5. Let's see what can happen here. The Longhorn of Gary Reese. He was the first competitor to go out the end and the last competitor to go out the end. Let's see if the V12 Detroit Diesels can get all kinds of heat in, build some horsepower, and take this Peterbilt down past 302 and 5. This is the last competitor. It will be a shootout.